responsible for, three of which you're going to drive today, you're going to get a chance to drive today, and the one that Mark just talked about that we revealed at Mile High, the NHRA race at Mile High a few weekends ago. Um, you know, last year we did uh, Dodge Demon, one year only, limited volumes, pretty high price point, very drag race specific car. And we wanted to keep a car, a Challenger, in the lineup for our drag race enthusiasts. And that's the, this is the answer to that. Um, we were not afraid to take, take what we could from Demon, and you'll see that in this car. This car comes standard with a single seat, just like a Demon did. Uh, passenger seat, rear seat, also available for a dollar, just like the Demon was. It's got an 8.4 inch touchscreen radio with drag mode. Um, we also brought into the car launch assist line lock, and a trans brake. Um, the way to make a drag car fast is obviously to get the power to the ground as best you can. Uh, we spent a lot of time on development of the, the suspension on the Demon. We took that suspension over to this car. We only modified the spring check heights for the different uh, weight of the vehicle to get the ride height correct. We took the sway bars, we took the shock, we slightly retuned the ADS, the electronic dampening on the shock. But this truly has a, a demon suspension on it to get the weight transfer to put the power down. It is a narrow body only, uh, and you can't do a drag car legitimately without a drag radial tire. So we got with our friends at Nexon and developed a brand new drag radial with them. It's a 275-40 R20. Uh, it's really a fantastic tire. We're very pleased with how that turned out. It works really well in the drag strip, and it also works really well on the street. Um, but all that doesn't mean anything if it doesn't get performance, right? So, same track, same day, same weather, same driver, scat pack, standard scat pack versus the 1320. We picked up three tenths of a second in the quarter mile. It's a significant difference. Drag races are one by inches. This car is almost 24 feet in front of the scat pack. That's a big gap, a car length and a half. That's a big delta. Mile per hour is the same because the motor is the same. It's the 392 Hemi. It's with an automatic transmission. So that's a testament to the car getting the power to the ground in a very efficient, very effective way of propelling the car down the track. Moving on to the Scat Pack wide body, um, also powered by a 392 Hemi, automatic and manual. This also comes standard with the 8.4 inch touchscreen radio, but this one has SRT drive mode, so you have street, sport, and, and track. And the reason we did that in this car was to really give the customers full access to all the tech, all the hardware that's in this car. You really need all those drive modes, uh, and the customers will definitely appreciate that. When we started on this project, the idea was to put wide tires and fender flares on it. And a few of us kind of got together, put our heads together, and we said, well, what can we do? Can we go a little bit further than just a wide tire on the car and still maintain street manners on it? So what we did is we put 14% more spring right in the front. We put much larger sway bars, front and rear, 34 front versus 32, 21.7 versus 19 rear, uh, and obviously we retune the, the, uh, the shocks, both the, uh, the hardware and the electronics on this car. And then it, it uh, obviously got the 305 tires, carryover tires from the Hellcat wide body, both a three season and a four season. Um, what does that mean for performance? Skid pad, we picked up four hundredths of a G, 0.97 versus 0.93. Braking distance, we lowered by three feet to 108 feet from 60. Um, zero to 60, we picked up a tenth. Quarter mile, we picked up two tenths. But that's not really the focus of this car. This car is focused on going fast around tracks. Uh, one of the two mile tracks we do a lot of testing at, this car is two seconds per lap, 12 car lengths, faster than a scat pack. That's a big gap per lap. Um, and that's really what this car is about. You guys will get an, ex get an opportunity to experience that not only on the road, but on the track today. Um, this is a really, really, really fun car. It's got a nice, Nice price point for customers. This is a really cool car, really fun car to have worked on, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Moving over to the Red Eye and the Hellcat, um, this car I like to explain to people is kind of the marriage of a Demon and a Hellcat, and this is the offspring. We took Demon DNA, we took Hellcat DNA, DNA, and we created the fastest, most powerful Hellcat ever. Um, so what did we take from Demon? Obviously the powertrain. We also took launch assist from Demon. We took line lock from Demon. Uh, and then we spread that into the Hellcat. We've got the Hellcat suspension on the car. We've got the Hellcat wheels and tires on the car. Um, and we've got the Hellcat brakes, the big six piston, 390 millimeter, two piece rotor front brakes on the car. 
In addition to that, being that this car's got 90 more horsepower than a standard 18 mile a year Hellcat, that means more straight line speed on a racetrack. More straight line speed means more heat into the brakes, which means quicker fade. Um, so to make our functional objectives, if you get a chance, you can look underneath the belly pan. We added two brake ducts underneath the belly pan. That was required to make the functional objectives on this car, the brake functional, brake fade functional objectives on this car. We actually picked up 33% um, more laps to, our, to, uh, to fade. Big difference with a little bit of airflow. And then we spread those ducts not only to this car, um, but also to the Hellcat wide body. Uh, so those are just, adi that's additional brake cooling on those cars. Um, what does that all mean for performance? Because that's really what it comes down to. This car's a tenth of a second quicker in the quarter mile than the Hellcat. Um, you kind of got to remember that it is still tire limited. It is still a, a, a good grippy three season tire, but it's not a drag radio. But it did pick up four miles an hour at the trap speed of the quarter mile. That's over a half a car length ahead of a Hellcat. Obviously that gap is growing. Um, top speed went from 195 miles an hour to 203 miles an hour. Uh, and the same racetrack that we talked about on this car, a second quicker per lap than a Hellcat. Uh, about six car lengths again, a big difference. And you will feel the difference on the track today when you drive this car. This car is a rocket ship. 